It's been a very long time since anyone produced an updated beginner's guide for Arknights. Yet, there are many new players coming into the game for the past few months and also definitely in the future. These players are looking for critical information that can help them through their time in the game. With that, I shall present to you guys my new Arknights Beginner's Guide for 2021 and 2022. Ready up, this is a lot of good tips bundled in one that I think most new players will want to know about when they join the game. I'm Cookie Kaze, and I'm going to take you through the guide for today. Let's begin with building our operators. A starter question to answer. Do you need to reroll for a new account when you start Arknights? The answer is no. Please do not reroll. Any new 6 star that you get from the beginner's banner can be good for you, whether it's a medic, sniper, defender, or guard. You're going to want to collect all the 6 stars as much as you can anyways. They're all very fun to use, so there is no point in rerolling. When starting, you should build a variety of classes, one of each at best. It is generally safe to build any starting 6 star that you own, even if it's a medic or supporter. Pick a starting squad of 12 to 20 units, whoever that looks nice to you. Make sure they span across the classes. Then, make them all elite ones first. Afterwards, choose to elite to your first 6 star, 5 star, or any unit that you like a lot. If you don't want to just rely on your own likability, and you want to make what you feel are better choices, like building strong operators, then you should read up on what the operators do, seeing their stats, skills, traits, and talents. If you still don't know very well what to build, what to do, and want critical information, ask players in community discord servers. My server will be a great place for you to start. Go to GamePress or Aship forums to get articles on the operators, or get professional advice from the content creators of Arknights. Watch their videos, watch their streams, or join their servers. There are only three things to note when building your operators. Levels, skill ranks, and promotions. For levels, the higher it is, the higher the general stats of your operators, like their attack, defense, and HP. For skill ranks, they determine the size of the boosts your operators get once skill is activated. More stats like attack, attack speed, defense, number of targets hit, range, stun time, a wide variety of stats and effects gets improved. And for promotion, these are like the limit breaks of your operators. After hitting the maximum cap of an operator's level, it allows you to add more levels to them after promotion and increase in the limit of however high their skill ranks can go. Levels use LMD and EXP. Skill ranks use skill summaries and materials. Promotions use LMD, chips, and materials. Skill ranks are more important than levels. If you build an operator up to the maximum level of Elite 0 and you are actively using them, they should have skill rank 4. If you build an operator up to the maximum level of Elite 1, they should have skill rank 7. If you build an operator to Elite 2, there is technically no rush to give them skill masteries just yet. Take your time as the material requirements for masteries are expensive. Plan out which operator you want to build to Elite 2, and if you can, you should generally be ready to give them the masteries as well once you promote them to Elite 2. Do not sleep on the other skills that your operators have. Often you'll hear players saying that you should only use Silver Ash skill 3, Surtur skill 3, Blaze skill 2, stuff like that as examples. But players don't often realize and appreciate how other skills of the operators exist. And in special times, these other ones work extremely well to your favor. Silver Ash skill 2 for instance is an exceptional healing defender ability. Surtur skill 2 is more for general use. No need to redeploy her and you'll still get a very powerful arts guard. Axia's skill 1 promises consistency instead of her skill 3 that have little control for you to time. You should learn to use each and every of your operator's skills, just like how you are to play a mobile game and you adapt to each of the skills that your character possesses. Before I close this segment, I get asked this, what's a good number of Elite 2 to own? If you own just one Elite 2 and a good number of Elite 1s, I would say that you can somewhat breeze through all the content in the game because you can always borrow a support unit, which borrowing units like Silver Ash, Surtur, Thorns, Blaze, Aeon Fiela, Axia are often the easy win buttons to all the stages. You don't have to fear building many operators in the game, since borrowing will forever stay as a function. Focus on building who you like instead, building who you find to be very powerful. Take this game casually, it's supposed to be easy to play, not your next school examination to stress about. 
Next, let's move on to clearing of stages. When you're just starting out in the game, take reference to the recommended operator level tag when entering stages, as this is a good indication of what your squad's general levels should be. You can clear stages with a lower level than the proposed requirements, but if you're new, you're not exactly expected to be an instant big brain. By the time you have a nice squad with all Elite 1, you should be able to clear out Chapter 4 and the Supplies Farming stages, where you can easily begin your farming journey in the game. Use the enemy intelligence to guide you as to what to do in the stage. After you play the stage for the first time, you gain intelligence and can see the enemy stats. Look at their defense and rest. If defense has a lower grade than resistance, physical damage will do better against them. If rest is lower than defense, then arts damage will do better. If it's the same, then any of the two will work. If both their defense and resistance are A grade and above, meaning they don't have a weakness to a certain damage, Elite 2 operators will have an easier time against them. If their defense and resistance are S, please start using buffers and debuffers. If their attack is very high, use a defender to aggro their attacks. This tip alone is very loaded. There's a lot to teach from this. I'll be making lesson videos to talk more deeply about enemy intelligence very soon, along with buffing and debuffing in the game. So make sure to subscribe to not miss the lesson. Next, farm the correct stages in the game. Use this infographic to help you to see what stages that you have unlocked are the best to farm the materials you need. I will also make a video to cover on farming stages in the future too, but this infographic can serve you well in the time being. Do not be afraid to look up stage guides or to ask for help in the game. Watch more YouTubers and streamers when your time is available to learn more about the game. Use support units for the stages that you are not going to need farming and just need to be cleared once. Support units are a blessing function to exist in the game, such that you don't need to own a support operator that you directly want and can just borrow from a friend. This is a later tip that I will reiterate again, but add as many friends as you can when you start the game. You can do so by joining Discord servers to find like-minded people to add. Use practice permits to practice before entering a stage to figure out how to clear them or use them to practice strategies in your free time to better understand the operators. You get 30 permits to use in a day, and it refreshes for you every day. If you keep practicing and use up your permits each time, that takes up about an hour in the day, and that's a lot of strategizing playtime, enough to make your time in Arknights very fruitful. Now moving on to getting new characters. You should only pull for guarantee in banners, especially if you're free to play. Later on in the game when you have many characters, that's when you can have the option of skipping banners. But when you start out, Guarantee is always a good choice. If you have something personal towards a character that you feel that getting a certain unit is super necessary, maybe because you're a sim or you don't want to miss out on the newest units, then go ahead, save more pools, pull beyond the guarantee, and hit your PT. Some of you might say, if I'm suggesting to only pull guaranteed, what about the 6 stars that you can get on the banner? What about the other 5 stars? You should pull until you get them, right? The beauty about the game of Arknights is that there is never a need to own a particular 6 star or 5 star when you're playing the game. Any operator you own is made good by your own gameplay and your own understanding of the characters. Look at Dr. Silvergun playing around with his 4 stars to beat all the stages in the game, or I love Amir who's pushing to do stages with 3 stars only. 6 stars and 5 stars help to add more fun skills to the game and also make the thinking less stressful when clearing stages, but they are never a must to begin with, and that's what makes this game so good and welcoming for newbies. In case I need to explain banner PT, I'll take the time to briefly talk about it here. The rates of obtaining a 6 star in the game is 2%, a probability of 1 in 50 pools. If you often get it under 50, 40, or 30 pools, it means you're very lucky for this game. The rate of a specific 6 star will depend on the kind of banner it is, which of course the featured 6 stars will have the highest probability out of everyone else, but there's still a chance that you obtain a 6 star that is off banner. I will actually go into more details about the rates in the game in a video that's coming very soon, but let's continue on this subject. Anyways, if within 50 pools you don't obtain any 6 star, on the 51st pool, the rate is improved from 2% to 4%, then on the 52nd, it'll be 6%, jumping by 2% each pool. Once you obtain any 6 star, the PT counter is reset, you go back to 2% per pool. That's how PT works for Arknights. 
The sad part about Arctans is that there is no proper system for you to keep track of your PT. So if you're someone who's particular, you will need to jot down the number of pulls that you have been doing. Whereas for me, I just do my own gauge. I just try to judge by memory, because I'm not too concerned about whether I hit PT or not. Next part, for recruitment. Pull often until the 3 stars are all recruited. Then only focus on pulling 4 stars, unless you want to collect robots and starters. If you need to know what are the tags to guarantee a 4 star and above, use this recruitment calculator to help you. Links to the recruitment calculators are in the description below. What the recruitment calculators do is that if you put the 5 tags that you see into the calculator, they'll tell you what combination of tags or what solo tag that you can put in that can help you to obtain something that's beyond the 3 stars. This will be extremely useful for new players to the game. How many recruitment pools you do in a day is up to you. Some may say you should pull whenever you have them. Others would do 3 in a day. For me, I do it only when I see good tags, or if I'm feeling lucky and wanting to pull for Indra and Vulcan. Indra and Vulcan, along with 4 star Estelle, are limited to the recruitment only. However, it is not exactly essential that you draw them, so it's on your own accord whether you want to try hard for them. I would say it's nice, but just not necessary. By the way, the timings that you should recruit your operators are as follows. 1 hour if you have no tags and want a chance for a robot or a starter 2 star. 3 hour 50 minutes if you put a tag in hopes for a particular robot, like specialist 3 hour 50 minutes for term EX, support 3 hour 50 minutes for castle 3, or robot for one of the 3 robots. Putting other tags like guard, medic, healing in an attempt to get robots should only be done at 1 hour. Should you be caring about robots in the game, it will be on your own choice whether you want to. There is a method that you get if you obtain max potential for Castle 3 and Lancet 2. Max potential meaning you obtain 6 copies of them, but it's simply not necessary for you to own them. I like the robots because I actually use them in my gameplay. So simply to put, it's by yourself to decide whether you want to go for them. Next timing, 7 hour 40 minutes if you do not put a tag or put Defender, Defense, DPS, Survival, Guard to try for Indra and Vulcan. You can still get 5 stars as I showed in my previous video that proves that you can get 5 stars even with 7 hour 40 minutes of recruitment with no tags. If you have never seen that video, you should after finishing this one. 9 hours if you put a tag that guarantees a 4 star, 5 star, senior operator or top operator. Senior operator and top operator will not drop in tags at 9 hours, but the 4 and 5 stars normal tags might still drop. Even if you have these normal tags that sets you for a 4 star or 5 star, I sometimes even take a gamble and just put 7 hour 40 minutes to save on my LMD. The idea here of all these timings is that increasing the number of hours in recruitment does not increase the probability of getting a higher rarity. All it does is that the higher the time, the less likely your chosen tags will drop. So do not misunderstand that 9 hours grants 5 stars, because it doesn't. This will lead up to the shopping guide after this but I feel I need to explain this especially to newbies. There are commendations, green certificates, and distinctions, yellow certificates. There's a table that explains how to get them, but there isn't much wording. So let me explain it for you. Every time you receive a new operator for the very first time, you receive a yellow cert. After that, for the second to sixth copy of the operator, you receive green certificates for one star to four stars, and yellow certificates for five stars and six stars. For the 7th copy and beyond, the yellow certs are improved for 5 star and 6 stars. Every duplicate copy of an operator from the second onwards give you this potential token which you can apply to the operator. If I reference to Genshin, it's like their constellation system, but over here we call it potential. Now the maximum potential an operator can go is potential 6. When it reaches this cap, you can still obtain duplicate copies. These duplicates will turn into tokens. When it reaches the cap, you will still be obtaining duplicate tokens. These duplicate tokens can be traded away for more certificates, as shown by the table bottom left. That can help you to buy more stuff in the commendation and distinction stores, which I'll mention later. That's what you have to know. It's a great system, I love it a lot, as it's very encouraging whether you are a whaler or free to play. Now on to the juicy bit, the shopping guide of Arc Knights. Do not trade original primes for randoms and spend original primes only on pro enhancement packs, skins, and sanity refreshes. When you have bought out your pro enhancement packs, 
it's on you to decide if you want to spend your precious OP on pools. I personally don't advise it, but I understand some people want as many pools as possible, especially for limited manners. Pools are for yourself to manage. There's only so much general tips I can give. I more often advocate OP to be only used for skins and sanity. Skins are good cosmetics to have and eye candy for in the game. They do not add any sort of stat buff to your characters, which is great. And sanity helps you to get more materials to build your operators. So imagine a situation in the game that you traded all your OP for orandoms just to get as many of the operators as you can. But after that, you don't even have many materials to build them at all. That's why I'd rather you trade OP for sanity and then use the sanity to farm all the materials so that you have more built operators instead of owning anyone and being able to build no one. Buy out phase 1 and some phase 2 commendation items. Try to save enough for every month's phase 1 items minimally. Don't be too hasty to complete phase 1 due to the trade-off. If you're low on certificates, only buy phase 1 materials that are the LMD, pure gold, battle records, and recruitment permits. No need for random, headhunting permits, and furniture parts, unless again, you really want pools. If you're rich on the green certificates and you have materials you intend to buy in phase 2, then clear out phase 1 and get the harder to obtain materials you intend to buy in phase 2. Do not rush to buy recruitment permits in phase 2 as well. They cost 15 green certificates and if you're not the kind that wait for 4 star tags to appear in recruitment and continuously do recruitment to obtain a lot of 3 stars, you're making a loss in your commendations. Also, don't buy headhunting permits unless you insist. It takes 450 commendations and that's very expensive. The returns that you get just don't match up. Finally about this store, never buy exchange vouchers just because you want to enter phase 3. It's not worth it. It's not worth to buy an exchange voucher for a 3 star or 4 star because you can easily obtain all of them in the game. Even heavy spenders of the game don't choose to skip to phase 3 and just buy out phase 1 and most of the phase 2 items every month. Now for the distinction store, or the yellow certificate store. Only buy operators or headhunting permits. The rest of the items, the materials and potentials you see there are for whales. When you first start out the game, saving distinctions for operators is reasonable. If there's a 5 star or 6 star that you've been eyeing for, you may as well save some certificates for them. But understand that it would be more worth to get more pools, since you can then have a chance to obtain more operators instead of just one. However, when you're saving for the pools or saving for the headhunting permits, do not buy the headhunting permits halfway. You should buy out all 5 phases within 1 month. It takes 258 distinctions to completely buy it, meaning you'll have to slowly save. Otherwise, if you buy it halfway, you're losing value in the item and not getting it at the cheaper discount that you get from phase 4 and phase 5. Next, buy only cheap catalysts in the shop voucher store. Buy potential items if you feel like doing so, but not recommended, or buy Ethan and Breeze. Again, only if you feel like doing so and you want to use or collect them. Buy furnitures and skins that you want, that's supposed to add to the happiness in the game, but never use your original primes on furniture sets, only furniture parts. Original primes should go only to skins. Buy credit store items at their discounted prices and only for what you will need. More often, whether on discount or not, do not buy carbon materials and expedited plan. Furniture parts should also not be bought as well as they do not have any materialistic help to top up your account. But at the end of the day, buy whatever you feel is important to you. A new player may find carbon materials to be very helpful, but towards late game having your base fully built, carbon materials are pretty pointless. If you're a furniture collector, the furniture parts can also feel important to you, so you decide as to how you spend your stuff in the credit store. Now this is where the caching parts come into play. Buy only monthly headhunting, starter packs, and double value original prime if you are not going to be a mega whale and wanting to spend some cash in the game. Limited time packs during the half anniversary, a very huge event, or their anniversary event itself will have a better tendency to be more worth. Once you exhausted all the double value, buy only the most expensive original prime pack if you are a leviathan never any lower as they offer way less value. Never buy weekly material packs. It's not worth the money at all, it's very expensive. And it'd be better if you buy OP and trade the original prime for sanity to farm materials. Material packs are for the lazy people who want to get instant materials to build their characters. 
And that's not a good habit for Arknights. Because to me, buying material packs and boosting your characters too quickly will ruin your experience in the game. Of course, if you don't feel that way, then by all means, you should buy the material packs for the self. Spending your money should add to your happiness and not make you feel lousy. If you don't want to spend a lot in the game, however, or you cannot spend a lot, it is most worth to buy a monthly card. For my own main account, I actually only buy monthly card. I don't really buy too much of anything else, so I'm like a dolphin spender. Ever since I bought it from the start of the game, my experience is tremendously improved by it. It gives you 60 additional sanity to spend every day and gets you to save an additional 10 pools at the end of every monthly card, which really enhances your time in the game. I strongly encourage this. Last two haters, let's talk about the base. To keep the beginner's guide simple without overcomplicating the math behind this, the base arrangements ranked by efficiency is as follows. 252 or 2 trading posts, 5 factories and 2 power plants has the best overall efficiency for everyone. Free to play or pay to play is the highest efficiency enjoyed by both parties. To get more details about how to exactly set this up, you can ask the people who are more familiar with such setups within my Discord server for instance, or reference to the links that I provided in the description of the video that teaches you about this. 243 often looks like the best efficiency when Arknights first started, back when the starting guides were made. Even many old content creators may state that it was the best. But now, it actually isn't, tested by much of the CN and EN community for the people who bothered to crunch the numbers. Its only benefit is that it is aesthetically pleasing, maxing everything out, but doesn't give the highest returns. If you're free to play and you really care about more goodies to speed up your base progress, you should avoid this. To be fair, most of you should avoid this. My own base right now is actually 243, but I'm getting people to teach me how to adapt to 252. 333 also looks aesthetically or if not symmetrically appealing, but it has the worst efficiency. It is just horrendous, does not offer good returns, and even 243 is better than this. If you are a heavy whaler of the game by the way, such that you are constantly refreshing your original primes for sanity and you farm a lot in the game, 153 is actually the king of efficiency. But if you are the sort that doesn't overpay in the game, only a mere fish like me who buys monthly card or you pay nothing at all, don't even consider this setup for yourself. Any other combinations are unconventional and should not be adopted because they have way worse efficiency. In the future, I may have a video that goes more in depth to base setups where I invite another player or content creator to teach me about base setups so that we can all learn about it together. But for now, no hard math, simple advice that you can follow. I mentioned this previously just now, but add friends fast to get more credits that lets you buy more materials and also get more support units to borrow. This starts from joining Discord servers. You can start from mine if you don't know where to go. Last hater on additional stages. Make sure to fill up the random limit in Annihilations Weekly. I don't think you'll want to miss out on getting all the pools you can get. Try playing Contingency Contract in your free time. There's some material rewards there and it's good training as well to climb the risk. Also go as far as possible into every limited time event. Limited time events have a splurge of goodies, free rewards all the time, a win for both free to play and pay to play. And even if you're a free to play player, most of the time, if not all the time, you'll be able to get all the rewards that an event can offer. And of course the final tip, do watch me for more videos that are to come from me. There are a lot of stuff that I intend to present to you guys, although it's going to be a little bit tough. I'm actually going to be a university student soon, so I'm hoping that I'm able to make some time to still be active on YouTube and Twitch for you guys. Sincerely from the bottom of my heart, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, that you guys found it to be informative and valuable for you guys. If you guys have any more questions with regards to what to do as a beginner, please put it down in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer as many of you as possible. But otherwise, really, I hope that you enjoyed your time watching through this video, and if not, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.